What is up guys? Welcome back to the Brandon Bruce channel and I am Brandon and today we're not doing a tech review. We're not doing any tech videos, but today I want to talk about this topic about working from home. I'm sure there's someone out there that has questions about working from home and you may be wanting to know how is it or maybe I want to do a work from home job. So I just want to share you some tips that I have um, gained over the few years that I have been personally working from home. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe and like this video if you like this content. Let's jump into it. video is working from home the good the bad and the ugly so uh, <laughs> i'm gonna just start it out by saying um it has its pros and it has its cons it's not um it's not all as peachy as you think it can be um and you're coming from a person that's been working from home for maybe the last three and a half years i was working from home before the pandemic my team at work uh, we had the privilege of working three and two three days at home and two days in the office. So before I was tired of being at home or feeling like, oh, I wanna get out, I was back in the office and able to do, do a commute and get back into the office. So as I said, uh, I have a commute. I have one hour commute time. And if I take the train, it's an hour. If I drive, I probably could cut the time down to 50 minutes. And I live in Indiana. Uh, my office is downtown. And yeah, so working from home is clutch. I'm not gonna front and say, oh, I, I don't mind working from home because you know, it's winter time and having to get up, get up in the morning, getting up at four, four thirty, having to start the car. Yeah, you, who, who wants to do all of that? And being able to just be in a warm house already and start work, yeah. It, it, it's really good, it's really nice. So I'll start off a little about what I actually do. I'm an account manager and my job is to uh, cover the vendors that I have under my accounts. And that may be billing, that may be technical support and discrepancies and things of that nature. And then I'm also like part, we're part call center as well. So uh, I may do a day in the life of how my day flows out in another video. But that's what I do on a daily basis from Monday through Friday. So let's just jump into it. How is it working from home? So uh, working from home, uh, yeah. Let's talk about the pros and I'll talk about when I first started working from home, I was very excited because I mean, I was in an office and like I said, I have a commute, have an hour commute and I was doing that Monday through Friday. So and then when I got the privilege of, I think I got the privilege of working from home Fridays. That's how I started off. And then maybe six months later, we went to three and two. So being able to, uh, and, and I thought this was like, cool. Like, I'm like, yeah, everybody working from home, I'm working from home too, blah, blah, blah. And like I said, three and two isn't bad at all. Before I'm stuck in the house and wanting to see the world or to experience the world, I'm back at work. And then when I don't really want to be at the office, I'm back at home. So it pretty, pretty much was really good. Um, so some of the pros, no early morning commute. So in order for me to get to work in time, I would need to get up about five. Sometimes I would get up at 445, get myself together. If I'm driving to work, I could leave a little later, but if I was gonna take the train, I would have to be on like a five o'clock train. I think 545, 550, that was my train. So I don't. you don't have to do that when you work from home. You don't have to worry about leaving the house. So that is one pro that I do like, and it also saves money. Um, when I drive, I, that's gas. I have to pay for parking downtown. Um, even when I take the train, I would have to pay a train fare. And I think right now it's like almost, I think seven bucks one way. So that's $14 in one day. Uh, when I would drive and park, I would pay $10 for parking. Um, and then driving, like that's gas. So not having to spend money on gas, wear and tear on your car, not having to deal with traffic, um, yeah. That it, it, it really is a good a big pro from working from home. Another pro, you get to save money on eating out. Now, some days I would bring a lunch, leftovers that I made from last night, but 
being downtown Chicago, they have great food. You have people in the office asking you what you're gonna eat, where you're going. So you're more prone to eat out. I would go get coffee at Dunkin' Donuts across the street. I would uh, go here, go there. Yeah, so by the time I got back home, I probably spent $50 on those two days that I was down um, downtown. I would probably spend $50 each day. And that adds up. If you were spending $50 for a week, that's $100 for those two days. For four for, for, for four weeks, that's 400 bucks that I'm probably am spending. And I probably was. I wasn't keeping track of it, but I probably was. So, and of course, if you're uh, at home, you eat out less. Well, I know for me, when I'm at home, when I've been working from home, I'm more prone to eat something for breakfast. I might go out for lunch, but that's not every day. And I'm not spending 50 bucks a day to eat. So let's get to some of the cons. Um, I have a few, I have a few more that have developed since pandemic um, because I'm not on three and two. And the biggest con, I'm just gonna get it out of the way. Man, the biggest con is being at home. Like, I never thought I would get tired of being at home Monday through Friday, uh, basically seven days a week if you count the weekends, but being at home. And let me get this straight. Like, like I love working from home, but I would like the capability of being able to at least go one day into the office only because work is work and home is home. And when you mix the two, it can be a little stressful. Uh, you, it, you, it can create... Uh, unneeded anxiety. I remember times I would work and work and work and then I would just go lay down and sleep the rest of the day. Sometimes I would sleep the night and go and get up and just work again because I would be so stressed out and burnt out at work that home didn't feel like a peaceful place. It didn't feel like a comfort place. Like when you get off the road and come in and put your key in the door, you're able to relax, you're able to wind down. But if you're already at home and home is part of work, it's like, uh, yeah, what am I doing here? I need to leave. So that has been my biggest con during pandemic. And of course, everything is open now. You're able to do things more flexible. But like I said, I'm still at home. And I'm not saying I want to change from working from home. But it really does mess with your psyche. Like being able to mentally digest being at home, working from home constantly. Um, yeah. So what I've developed, what I've been doing, I take mental days. I take half days for mental days. And that keeps me going. And I believe around my birthday was the first time I ever took like a complete week off just because I didn't go anywhere. I stayed here, um, but I was able to do things I wanted to do, um, clean the house, do things in the house that I wouldn't do while I'm working. So I was able to like decompress and decompose and not have to deal with the stressfulness of working from home. I'm gonna flip flop a little cause I just had to get that off my chest. But another pro from working from home for me is your own space. I love having my own space. I am an only child and kind of an introvert at times. I've grown to get out of it. When I need to be an extrovert, I'm an extrovert. But when you are in the workplace, you really don't have your own space. Our stations had cubicles. You had, I had, I was in the middle. I had someone on the left and on the right. And at times, like if someone's listening to music or someone's eating, you're smelling, you're reaving their food. And yeah, it, it, it can be messy. It can be like, okay, I don't want this. But at home, I have my own space. I have my own office. Um, I don't have to deal with the social conversations because some days I had days that I just wanted to dive in and work hard and wanted to knock stuff out. But those can be distractions if you constantly got coworkers asking you this, wanting to see this, wanting to see that. And I, I'm not saying I, I, I don't mind being social, but you know, there are some moments you just want to be to yourself and get your work done. So you are able to do that at home. You are able to have your own space, to have your own uh, quietness. And I work in a lot of quietness. Yes, I'm a musician and I do love music. I play music constantly, but there are times when I just like peace and quietness. I like to hear the refrigerator run. I like to hear the cars go down the street. I don't have a TV on. I just like to hear myself breathe, you know? Get 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 yourself centered. But okay, going back to the cons, I really don't have any more outside of the 
not being able to leave the house. Um, like I said, that flexibility, it does mess with you mentally sometimes. I actually became a little restless as well because you being consumed with work, you looking at emails. After, after I've logged off, I'm still like in work mode. I'm like, well, I'm here at home. Well, I'm, I still, let me look at this. If something come through on my phone, let me look at that. Let me see what this is. So what I had to do, I had to set boundaries. I really did. So one boundary, I'll give you a few tips. A boundary that you should set when you start working from home, you should have a dedicated workspace. You should have a space dedicated in your house solely for work. Don't put it in your bedroom. And I know you might not have the liberty of being able to do that because if you have a small place, if you have a studio, then everything is what it is. Or if you have a loft, everything is what it is. But have a dedicated space dedicated to work. And then when it's time to get off, shut that stuff down, turn them lights off, shut down that computer and walk away. That's what you have to do. You have to kind of set that boundary. So when I started doing that in the last year and a half, I find myself in a better space. I was in a better space mentally. When I shut down and leave that space, don't go back until the next day, I was able to actually walk away and not feel like, oh, I'm still working. Or because, you know, you're constantly thinking about, oh, there's always something to do. Oh, do I need to look this up? Do I need to send this report? Do I need to look at these invoices? Do I need to pay these? But you got to be able to turn that off. I actually think I work from home. I think me working from home, I'm more productive at home. I do more work at home than I did in the office. So I'm more prone to be like, oh, let me knock this out. Let me do this. Let me do that. Versus me leaving the job at work or closing the door. See, that's the thing. When you're at work, when you leave, you leave. Um, when you're at home, working from home, work is always there. It's, it's easier to access. It's easier to get back into it or to turn up, turn the computer back on and look at something. But if you have that dedicated space, workspace, if you have the liberty of doing that in your house, put it in the basement, put it in another room, don't put it in your bedroom, um, do that. Set that boundary because that has really helped me out. Another tip that I would give you, use your lunch break, use it. And when I say use your lunch break, do not sit at the computer on your lunch break doing work. Don't take work calls, decompress. If you have to get up out of the house, get up out of the house, go for a walk. If you have an hour, 30 minutes, leave the house, refresh, reset. Because if you do this, not only your body needs it to reset, but you might come back motivated and inspired to jump back into work. And what I would do some days, I would walk my dog on my lunch break. I would go work out on my lunch break. If I had to go get some things from the grocery store, I would do that just to get out from being in a house all day. And my last tip that I will give you, and I have issues with this like on a weekly basis, don't forget to eat. You know, you might get headaches, you might be sluggish, and that might be because, that might be the cause of you not eating and getting nutrition, getting the energy that you need. Eat breakfast, take snacks, eat. Now, don't get so caught up on the snacks, candy, because it's easy to snack when you're working from home because you have access to your kitchen, to your refrigerator, but get some healthy snacks. But what I mean, just make sure you eat. Don't skip meals because if you do that, you'll keep your energy levels going up, take vitamins, you'll be able to stay in the game and not get overwhelmed from the stress of working from home and being at home. And I'm gonna give you one more tip. This is what I do maybe three times out of a week. I will wake up and act like I'm going to work. So I will get, I will shower, get dressed as if I'm about to hit the door. I will actually put my shoes on to go to the basement in my office to start work. And when I did that, that gave me that, that like reprogrammed my mind to know like, oh, you're up, you're working. And it kept me motivated to get things done. And I felt more in, I, f I felt more on. So it wasn't that, I didn't feel like uh, lethargic because let me get this straight. There are times that you gonna wanna be like, oh, I'll just bring the computer into the bed. Or I'll just bring the computer into my bedroom. Like I said, set boundaries. Your bedroom, your bed, your whatever room you have, if you sleep on a couch or whatever, that space is sacred. And it's supposed to be like, comfort, peace, your happy place. But when you mix the two, 
Uh, that's when issues come up. You're sluggish. You don't perform well. You're not as productive. So you got to get yourself up. You really do. You have to encourage yourself. If you do that, you'll be able to work from home and you'll be able to go through the the each day like it ain't nothing. And that's what I had to do. I had to develop some plans. I had to get disciplined on getting up and stretching, getting out, getting out of the bed. And one last tip. I know I keep adding tips and tips and tips. If you have the liberty of working out before you start work, man, this is the best thing ever. See, I start work so early in the morning that some days I don't get a chance to get up because I might go to sleep late. But if you go to sleep on time and you still have an early morning, if you're able to get in a workout, man, this is golden. If you can work out before you start working from home, I've done this many times and the day goes by so quick, so easy. Um, nothing gets to me. Um, I'm, I'm dedicated. I'm productive. Everything is running on 10. All my cylinders are running. <laughs> so if you're able to do those things, then yeah, work out before you work from home. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Um, be sure to comment below. Let me know if you work from home or if you're thinking about working from home, uh, tell me your story. If you're working from home, tell me how, what you do. What are some tips you do to stay productive, to stay energized and to stay on and to stay alert. And if you're thinking about working from home, let me know what kind of job you're trying to get. And maybe I can help you into uh, knowing what you got to do to be set up or anything. And like I said before, I want to make a series out of this, um, probably about five videos, just giving some uh, tips and things of how how it's been helping me and what you could do better, even on a technical uh, part, like getting monitors and having good Wi-Fi. So uh, thank you. If you like the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and give me a subscribe if you like the content you're seeing. And that's all I got for you guys. Be blessed. Stay blessed, stay safe.